Hello, and welcome to the April 2023 Economic and Market Update, presented by Commonwealth Financial Network. My name is Brad McMillan, and I'm Commonwealth's Chief Investment Officer. After a weak February, markets rallied last month. U.S. markets were up by low single digits, while bond markets were in the same range. International markets also showed modest gains, with developed markets about the same as the U.S., but with emerging doing slightly better. For the quarter as a whole, the NASDAQ did best, moving into a bull market by some measures, followed by developed international markets and the S&P 500. This was a much stronger start to the year than most had expected, and it may well be a positive sign for how the rest of the year will play out. What drove the gains during the quarter was progress on inflation. While it's still too high, it's well below where we started the year. With the Fed having hiked rates at a fast pace, markets are now convinced that inflation will come under control, as the benchmark yield on the 10-year U.S. Treasury dropped significantly during the quarter. Another development for inflation came in March, in the form of the Silicon Valley bank collapse. While fears of a wider banking crisis rattled markets, Ultimately, fast and significant federal actions both resolve the immediate concern and also stabilize the system as a whole by giving banks access to capital to shore up their balance sheets. That said, though, those balance sheets do remain weak, and banks are likely to pull back through the next year, tightening financial conditions, and by the way, doing much of the Fed's job in controlling inflation for it. So with that in place, markets now expect few, if any, more rate hikes, and very likely some cuts this year as the economy slows down. That economic slowdown, though, hasn't shown up yet, even though it very likely will soon. The March data, for example, was weaker overall as job growth and consumer spending pulled back. We're now starting to see signs that rate hikes from last year are acting as a drag on the economy. So a recession remains possible by the end of the year, although so far it looks like if we do get one, it'll be mild. So while the outlook remains positive, of course, there are still risks. The evolving banking pullback is one, and the political risks we talked about last month are still in play as well. Here in the U.S., the debt ceiling confrontation is moving closer. Internationally, China remains a wild card. And we just learned this morning of an OPEC production cut, which is rattling energy markets. And that's not even considering the risks we don't even see yet. Nothing is guaranteed. But despite those risks, as we look ahead, the fundamentals are still healthy. We appear to have avoided wider banking system disruption, which is a big positive, and consumer confidence is still at healthy levels, despite everything. So as long as the jobs market stays strong, any recession, if we get one, should be mild. Big picture, there's been both good and bad news this year, but overall there's been more good than bad. And that sets the stage for how things could keep getting better over the next several months, even in the face of bad news. The debt ceiling confrontation will be resolved, for example. We'll know where we are with the recession. And inflation and rates should keep getting better. In other words, we do face real risks, but we're moving past many of them. We're certainly not done with turbulence, but despite everything, we're in a pretty good place. So that's it for this update. Thanks for watching. Join me in May for the next one, but until then, be sure to check my blog, The Independent Market Observer, for more timely comments. Be safe, stay sane, and stay healthy. We are getting through this, together.